What's up, sons? It's Blindrod with Sava Tech once again, and finally I have the first SMOS video for this channel. SMOS is a Simple Mining OS. It's based off of Ubuntu, and it's just a quick, easy way to go ahead and run a mining rig off of a USB stick, so stick around. Welcome back. So the things you're going to need here is an operating system either Windows or Mac OS that you already have ready to go. Today we're going to be focusing on Windows and then a USB key with 8 gigabytes of storage or more. Currently most of the cheap ones are going to be around 16 to 32 gigabytes. I'll leave the cheapest one as of right now that's on Amazon for the US. So go ahead and click the affiliate link in the description below. I get a kickback for all of the purchases you make that way. Moving on, let's get into it. Alrighty, welcome back. So you're going to want to head to simplemining.net. And on simplemining.net, on the right side, you'll have installation instructions that should cover everything you need. But for a visual, helpful guide, we're going to go through it all here for you guys right now. The first thing you're going to need is to download the image file. There's one for R series for AMD, RX series for AMD, and then NV series for NVIDIA, all NVIDIA cards. You can see the compatibility with the checks and X's next to all of the cards here. So just pick whatever is going to work, of course, for your particular mining setup. The next thing you want to check is your USB drive size. It's going to be a minimum of seven gigabytes. We're going to be showing you guys how to do it on a USB 3.0 stick, which is what I highly recommend because spending money on a full size hard drive for this is unnecessary and just don't want to be wasting the money on it. The next thing you're going to want to get is etcher.io. I've already pre-downloaded it. This is the website and this is the one Simple Mining recommends. However, you can use Rufus and if you're going to be using it, a, a Mac device or OS X device, I'll have to do another how-to on how to burn images using terminal. However, if there's not too much demand for that, I won't. So if that's something you need, make sure you let me know in the comment section below. Alrighty, so once you have both of these open, you can go to your downloads folder, which I already have pulled up over here, and you can right click the Simple Miner NV and use 7-zip to extract here, or use the built-in Windows 10 and use the extract all. I just have 7-zip because it supports a wide variety of other compression formats, and I will leave a link to it in the description below. Alrighty, so once it's extracted, you should see a simple minor disk image file right here. It'll have a little file with a little disk in the in the middle of it. And then the next thing you'll want to do is run the etcher setup. Double click it and click I agree. Unless of course you don't agree and then well find another way to burn this image file and then once it's installed and completed you're just going to do a quick search for etcher desktop app and open it up. You'll see here it has a very basic UI. There's not much you can really mess up here, which is why I think they recommend it. You'll click your downloads file and select the image file that we just extracted and click open. At this point, you can click flash and it'll start flashing the device. From here on out, it's just going to be a waiting game. At this point, we're going to want to open the drive and find the config file. In the config file, you're going to replace your user email with the email that you sign up with on Simple Mining. So if you go back to Simple Mining, you'll see the register button in the top right. Just go ahead and type in your email, a desired password, twice register, just like any other type of registration you, you would typically do, and then confirm with an email address. And then that same example email we're going to, and this is a real email, you guys can, you guys can email me. I, I shouldn't say example. Uh, you can email me here. Uh, just don't try to 
get into my temporary simple mining OS. So uh, you'll type the email in here, press control S to save and close down. So once you've completed that configuration, all you have to do now is plug the USB device into your mining rig and power it on. It should boot from the USB if you have no other devices like a hard drive plugged in. And if you don't get a boot, just make sure you go in your BIOS and make sure that you have boot from USB enabled. And then now we're gonna go ahead and log into simplemining.net to control our miner. Okie dokie, so now that we're in here, the only other information that I wanted to give you guys is that if you end up coming over to your miner here under rig list and you click, sorry, under rig list, let me click that again. And you click console and it says you do not have KVM enabled in your BIOS, just make sure that you boot back into your BIOS, usually with with the delete key or F11. And then you're gonna want to go to Intel virtualization and enable VT dash D and that will get you this minor console view from the actual web GUI. Now at this point the next things we can do is assign it a group by checking it and clicking assign group and then selecting the group we want to assign it to. You want to reload the miner so that it actually goes to whatever default group settings you have at that point. You can control groups by clicking rig groups and then here you guys will be able to change all of your minor options by by clicking the minor programs it will give you a list of Linux supported miners which is pretty much going to be anything you could want under the Sun and you can put in custom pools so for example here I'm actually mining BTCZ on our zcash.sonofattack.com pool by just putting in the server address here zcash.sonofattack.com and then putting in my BTCZ wallet and then my rig name so all of the config files is here are similar to anything you would see on either a GUI based install of Ubuntu or you know any other Linux config file that you would do even headless as well as similar to what you would put in a config file for Windows so it's very basic and very straightforward here somebody did ask me about mining our Perl pool I'm gonna do a separate video on that but I did want to say that the big things there is all the Claymore settings are the same so you're going to want to just make sure that you go ahead and specify all coins and turn that on when using Claymore if you're trying to mine on our Pearl pool or on any other pool that's that's ET hash but not Ethereum itself and that's kind of the, the low down there. So that's going to wrap up how to install SMOS onto a USB stick and boot to it and start mining. It's pretty straightforward and I would argue even more simple than what we would be seeing with a Windows operating system. Now some of the arguments for a Windows operating system of course is just familiarity in general and then the other thing would be overclocking but hold on in just the next video we're going to talk about overclocking with SMOS so if you're interested in that click the subscribe button down below let me know what you guys think of the video in the comment section below and this is one of my favorite ways to get a mining rig up and going as fast as possible thanks for watching as always and I will see you next Tuesday